it's Sally again, doing Magic Mike Moments. And today I'm interviewing Mary Ziegler, who's in Budrum, Queensland. Hi, Mary. Hi, how are you, Sally? Good, I'm so excited to chat to you. Let me just introduce you, darling. Mary is an experienced childbirth expert. Her passion is teaching women to reconnect with their innate knowledge about childbirth, to become powerful into transitioning to motherhood the way nature intended. Mary is teaching the empowering tools, knowledge and mind work she has learned birthing with over 1,000 women in the last 25 years as a midwife, helping women to be able to take responsibility for their own birth. Whoa, that's a lot oh. of experience. Whoa, Mary, would you like to share with us a little bit about your whole journey and how you ended up doing what you're doing now? Wow, Sally, that goes back a long time. Um, I started off in, a, in nursing training and then before I had my own daughter, I became a midwife. Um, and I had a long journey becoming pregnant myself. So that, I think that was kind of the interest in, in midwifery. Mm -hmm. And I trained in New Zealand. So New Zealand's very different to Australia in that it already had the culture of private midwifery or continuity of care. Right. So that's what I experienced with my own birth. I was surrounded by midwives. And then when I left um, New Zealand thinking that it was time to sort of hang up the 24-7 phone, mm -hmm. I came to Australia because I love it and I love the heat. Oh, maybe not quite so much just now, <laughs> but uh, it's really hot. Um, and, and started working in a private hospital here on the Sunshine Coast. Um, quite a shock. Uh, the, the culture of birth in Australia was quite a shock. And it didn't take me long before, well, it was five years, which is the longest, I might add, I've ever worked in a hospital environment. Mm. So I did the five years, and then I just simply had to come back into private midwifery. And I brought with me everything that I practiced in New Zealand and got a really big shock where I was told, well, sorry, you can't just bring your woman into a hospital and birth here. You know, it's not unheard of. And I went, you know, like, seriously? Yeah. And, oh, no, you can't practice. There's no insurance and da-da-da-da and da-da-da-da. So that was the first brick. And I've got to say that probably the last seven years in private midwifery has been like, but like a bug on a windscreen you know you take a few steps and you're flying and then splat you know everything that you want to do <laughs> there's, there's insurances and policies and you know all this stuff that you've got to do it yeah it was it was quite a nightmare so where I got to now is again it was it was constantly being on call I was birthing 40 women a year in my practice mm. and I had this calling that I just wasn't getting to enough women. Like all these things that I teach, these women were birthing beautifully. Um, probably 90% were choosing to birth at home after they'd, they'd been through the course that, you know, I was teaching throughout their pregnancy. And so my dream has been, how do I get this? to a much greater population. Like, why can't all women birth like this? Mm. And, you know, we're stuck in this culture where childbirth has become micromanaged by the hospitals mm. and women have lost all trust mm. in themselves and their own knowledge. So it's, it's been an evolving journey, but the last seven years in particular of my midwifery has been shown has shown me the tools that can empower women mm -hmm. and these women have taught me so much you know like they've just been incredible um and even when their journey's been tough um because not everyone just you know pops out a baby yeah, yeah. so but even when their journey has been tough the transition into motherhood has been just incredible because of the work that they've put into their mm. whole birthing journey so mm. You know, I've been on a huge learning curve, especially these last seven or eight years. And, um, yeah, I hope that I can make a difference. But it's, it's, um, it just seems to get tougher. And I guess the tougher it gets to get out there, yep. um, 
the more determined and more obstinate I become. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting because I, that was just leading into my next question. Um, you know, what have some, some of the challenges been and the hurdles that you've had to overcome because, you know, you're defying the traditional medical system and, and coming out with something ooh, a little bit out there. And, I mean, it's not. It's just natural. But, you know, I'd be interested to hear some of the challenges that you've had along the way. It must have been huge. Yeah, I guess, I guess the biggest challenge to me in private practice, I'll just do the last seven years, um, the biggest challenge has been what's become the micromanagement of midwives as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just recently, there was a massive audit on all private midwives to make sure that every single box was the same, um, that we all had a hand-washing policy in someone's house, for Christ's sake. You know, like, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing this for years and no-one's asked me to sign a piece of paper that I've got a policy, yeah. you know, written up on my hand-washing. You know. Um, yeah, the, the, it's been the micromanagement of midwives and the framework that they're determining that we can practice within that just doesn't sit right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the midwifery side of it, the political side of it is, you know, I become like this, I don't know, this bird that just wants to put their head in the sand, yeah. um, go underground. But on the other hand, what is really difficult is the culture of women, um, where women are now thinking what is normal birth, you know, if the baby comes out of the vagina, that's considered a normal birth. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether it came out of the vagina with forceps or it came out um, after an induction or she had an epidural. Yep. It's all been added to the list of normal birth. Yep. You know, like, and so their expectation of childbirth is has become extremely medical. Um, yep. Yep. And so when I go to talk to women about this sort of thing, it's either, oh, I couldn't do that, mm. you know, or the doctor said, or my obstetrician said. Mm. And I can't believe when I talk to some pregnant women who say to me, oh, no, my obstetrician said I need to have an induction. I said, well, how many days over are you? Two. Yeah. And I said, so you do realise that your birthing date is from 38 weeks to 42. That's a birthing moon, a birthing month. Yep. There's all sorts of crazy stuff like this. So the culture itself that I'm breaking into, that's going to be my biggest hurdle. Mm. But I think it's changing, just slowly. Yeah, slowly. Uh, yeah. You know, gone are the days of the old home birth at home with the hot towels and, you know, it's, yeah. pick it up, would you, Deirdre? And it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you yeah. <laughs> know. Sorry, that was my Look, most of mine, Sally, are home births. You know, yeah, of course. I would, you know, out of 40 a year, probably two would be yeah. a hospital births. Yeah. Home births are fantastic, but I do have to acknowledge that most women birth in hospital. So how can I inspire women to, to be their best and own their birth in that sort of environment? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yes. I mean, I was referring to originally, you know, thousands of years ago, it, there were no hospitals, there were no doctors, and you just oh. worked and, uh, you know, did the best you could. So and Queen Victoria read that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, what would you say would be the biggest issue facing the, the whole issue of pregnancy and childbirth? And because it's not just for women, it's, you know, it includes men as well. So I think... Their, their biggest um, issue is the medicalization of childbirth and the information that they're given. Yep, yep. You know, if I ask the girl who I'm going out to Mount Isa to birth, what happened in your first birth that was so traumatic? She just said, I had no idea where to get information. Yeah, right. You know, and everyone said, don't worry, just attend the antenatal classes at hospital. Well, they petrified her. Mm -hmm. And so she went into hospital with greatest fear. So the greatest issue facing women and men and their partners is fear, their own emotions. Yep. 
course, of course, particularly for the first birth, you know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's the great unknown. And, um, you know, I know with my first, I bought every book under the sun. It was information overwhelm. And then it was all varying from different countries wherever the books came as well about what you need to do and where you need to go and when you need to go to the hospital and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, oh, yes, I just didn't want to get it wrong. You know, I just wanted to follow the guidebook. But, you know, the guidebook is really within here. So, oh, man. So having led into that about the, you know, fear being one of the biggest issues, what would be three top tips to help these men and, I mean, women and their partners, men or, you know, midwives, whatever, uh, help overcome this fear around the whole pregnancy and childbirth? That's a really big one. Um, the first is that women need to own birth. Mm -hmm. You know, no one else can do it for you. Yeah. You need to own it. And in owning it, you need to check out your beliefs to make sure they resonate that you are trusting yourself. So all the beliefs that are around childbirth that are out in society, you know, childbirth is painful, childbirth is this, childbirth is this. When you have fear because of these beliefs, you need to check whether these beliefs are serving you yep. or whether they are causing greater fear. Yep. You also need to realise that fear is nothing but false evidence appearing real. It is not your fear. It is thoughts created by society. Yep. And every, it does not pertain to you. So in owning your birth, that's number one. The second one is to really hunt for education that suits you. So, you, you know, Dr. Google is like the massive encyclopedia of the universe. But on Dr. Google is lots of different forms of um, antenatal education. Sorry about that. It's car noise. <laughs> so there is mindfulness for birth. There is hypnobirthing. There is calm birth. There is um, spiritual birthing. You know, there's a whole conglomeration. And, you know, what I did was I learned all these courses and then I, with the women, we took a little bit of each of these courses, put it into a big witch's cauldron, because that's what we're seen as, <laughs> um, and take the best practices out and say to women, look, here's meditation is fantastic. You know, so women have got to seek the education. Mm. What sits in front of them is the hospital education, which is the biggest load of bullshit. It tells you all about birth. It tells you about your epidural. It tells you about your cesarean. It tells you about um, when to phone us to ring to the hospital. Yep. None of it places any trust in the woman. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah. seeking the education yeah, is really important. And I think in today's culture, the third thing would be to find a mentor. Um, someone who, you know, like women are now often in completely different areas from their parents, their mother, and yep. women that used to support women in childbirth. You yep. need a tribe. Yep. You need a tribe of women that are going to support you in your wishes for normal, natural childbirth. Yep. You have to put up a strong plexiglass, if you like, against comments and negativity that yep. you're trying to do something great yeah you know yeah. because it's going to yeah. yeah it's going to come at you yeah. so you need a mentor you need a tribe yep. that is part of you now if you're thinking about um, normal birth natural birth believe you me the universe is going to provide you with that tribe just put it out there and it's going to appear before you and you'll find that you receive all the um, support and nurturing towards what it is you want to have and, and experience in childbirth. That's that. They're probably my three greatest tips. They're really important. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. You know, and just having that support crew around you as well, it, it provides more opportunity for you to embrace the wonderfulness of being pregnant and the childbirth and dispelling the fear and the myths around it and, you know, surrounding yourself with the good and the, the positive and then shielding yourself against all the negative and all the other stuff that comes in. And, mm. you know, just, 
I really resonate with what you're doing. It's giving me goosebumps. And, you know, in this day and age, to be, you know, having this discussion, it's quite scary, really. It's just, everything is by the rule book. It's occupational health and safety. It's just creating jobs for other people. And it's forgetting about the actual person and what they're going through. And, you know, bringing it back to what's important and keeping it real and true. So, you know, I really, really love what you're doing. And, you know, I can't believe in 2018 we're having this conversation, to be perfectly honest, you know. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? Yeah, we have free will, we have choice. And I understand, you know, there has to be, we're still not fully evolved as a society yet to be fully immersed into, oh, we just do this, we do the home birthing and, and the meditation and everything. It's, that's, it's still a, a society of fear. I suppose fear-based society it's it's totally fear-based i mean it's even fear-based for midwives yeah. you know and i guess that's why i'm pulling back and into and and developing into teaching is that i don't want to work fearing that the powers that be are going to come down on me like a ton of bricks because you know i didn't tick a box you know yeah. i don't want to practice through fear um and that's what it's done to midwifery. The hospital system is, is a, um, a typical thing where, where midwives are afraid to, and it's really sad, it, we, we become disempowered ourselves because of the bullying, um, because we need our job, because of the horizontal violence. Um, we, we come away feeling really dissatisfied for sticking up for what we know to be um, the best thing for the women that we've been caring for. Yeah. It's horrific. You know, we grieve and we're traumatised. So God knows what it does to the, the, the mother and the father that, you know, are experiencing this. And then that, that comes down towards the baby as well because whatever the, totally. the, the surrounding crew is feeling, particularly the mother, that's transferred right through. And, you know, it's... The more we can make it a peaceful journey throughout, you know, the more peaceful the baby's going to be and, and more relaxed. And yeah, totally, totally. Um, yeah. yeah. So, what was I going to say? All right. So, I mean, oh, at the end of the day, considering all of this, what are you most passionate about in all this birthing and pregnancy and whatever? What would be your biggest passion? Look, I have to say that my biggest passion is is teaching everything that I know um, that inspires. And I can't really say that I empower women, but what I say inspires women to empower themselves. Yep, yep. In sure. You know, uh, that's my passion. My passion is, is teaching women so that they have got a choice mm. in childbirth. Um, They've got a choice to own it themselves. They've got a choice now whether they allow people just to conduct their birth or whether they take back the power themselves and birth with joy and transition into motherhood in safety and, and feeling physically and emotionally safe and happy and well. Yeah. Absolutely, bringing that the whole well-being around the birthing process and, and the pregnancy as well. I mean, you know, there's a place for everything and some people may choose to go down the medical line, but at least if they knew as part of their information gathering that that was a, an option, oh, it's, yeah. it was relevant and just as applicable to choosing it the traditional old school way, whatever. You know, that choice is really, really important, important because then they can own their choice. And, and, yeah. and live it that way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, you can think about it. A lot of people are, are afraid of choice yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they just want to sit in the boxes. Yeah. And at the end of the day, a mother is, or a mum to be, is going to always, always, always want the best for her baby. Yeah. Now, does she trust in herself mm. or she, does she trust in the white coat? Mm. it comes down to that mm. you know does she trust that everything's okay with her baby because she has a, a knowledge of herself mm. and a trust in herself and um, the ancient wisdom of women or does she handle that over 
and trust in what someone's saying mm. um, to her. It's a really fine line. And the bottom line is that baby. You know, she wants a well baby. But it's not good enough just to say, oh, well, you know, she's got a healthy baby and the mother's healthy, out the door. Yeah. It's, that's not good enough anymore because the way she's got to receive her baby, yep. she's either in a place of strength or she's in a place of trauma and sadness. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's where it is now. Mm. Oh, that does give me goosebumps with the, the sadness around it all because I think in many ways, some think they've done the hard work by getting pregnant, you know, <laughs> all right, tick that box <laughs> And now tell me what I need to do next, you know, and, and ring up eight, as soon as you're pregnant, you book in for your, your, your gynae and, you, you know, if you don't do it straight away, you'll never get one and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, that's the rule book, if you like, and it's rather than, yeah. okay, yes, tick, I've done the first stage and now the next stage is, you know, empowering myself and, and getting that information and choosing where, what I want to do for myself and for my baby and for my welfare and my well-being and all that sort of stuff, yeah. I mean, how do we bridge that gap? I mean, well, what you're doing is starting with it and getting it out there and um, building the awareness and and providing the tools. It's awesome, Mary, just awesome. You know, we need to clone you. <laughs> because, you know, the baby's never going to stop coming out, baby. <laughs> like, it's, it's just a happening thing. There are so many people out there now, you know, you see on Facebook all these groups of women who are trying to do the very best for birth you know i just wish there was a way that we could bring all these groups together because the energy yeah. that will be created by everyone becoming as one yeah. would be huge but everyone's you know writing their own little program and um and they all work yeah. to a degree um but if we could just bring everyone together yeah, combine forces. Imagine how powerful yeah. that would be. Whoa. That would be really, really powerful. Well, let's put it out there. Let's just put it yeah. out there. Oh, I am. I am. <laughs> well, I'm really <laughs> <good>. <laughs> on the same page. Yeah. The more we can spread the word, you know, the more, you know, we never know what can happen. But it's, it's really important to talk about it and build that awareness and take that fear away and say you do have a choice. And, um yeah, in this day and age, I think it, it's time, really. It really is time. And it's about the well-being of every person involved, and particularly the baby. So, yeah. You know, enough is enough. Yeah. You know, time, it? it is, childbirth is a human rights issue now. The human, the, the human species yep. is endangered yeah. because of the way in which we mentally and physically and emotionally birth. Where it's it's as simple as that. We're an endangered species, and enough's enough. It's got to be turned around. I totally, totally, totally agree. There's enough problems with the current people in society that they have enough issues. We don't want to create babies that are born with issues starting out. Yeah, and because of yeah. the birthing experience, so. Well, we could talk about this till the cows come back. Yeah, and it's really, really relevant and it's really, it may be topical, but it, it needs discussing and it needs that airplay, I think. So, you know. Anyway, yeah, thanks, Sally. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on and talking about this today. I just, you know, it hits hard down here because particularly as a mother and I look at my experience and if I'd had better knowledge or had better trust within myself or had even stopped to think about it you know I may have made a few different choices and um you know it is what it is but the more we can help other people and empower them yeah. within themselves through your inspiring and support and motivation and knowledge it's, it's awesome yeah so now Mary if people want to get in contact with you and find out more about what you do or get hold of you where can we send them uh, you could send them to the Know Your Midwife Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, you can also send them an email. I mean, so the, there's a website called knowyourmidwife.com.au. Yep. Um, there's the Facebook page, knowyourmidwife.com.au. Yep. But I'm changing into Changing Birth on Earth. So, um, and I've started a not-for-profit not foundation to do this and so my email is now c changing but just a c 
seabirthonearth at gmail.com. So seabirthonearth at gmail.com. Whoa. Um, yeah. Yeah, not not the profit organisation. That's just awesome. You know, that it just shows your total passion about what you're doing and where you're going with it. Yeah. It's awesome, Mary. It's, it's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. I just really thank you, Sally. For following, um, keeping in contact and seeing where you're going with this and helping wherever we can because it, it really is time and it, it's wonderful and it's it's something that you're passionate about and I just love that you, you, you're totally in there and, you know, you've, you've gone through a lot of hurdles, a lot of challenges to get where you're at, you know, fighting the traditional system and, um, you know, all power to you. I just think it's brilliant. So yeah. Thanks, Sally. Hmm. Thanks for the opportunity, Sally. Yeah, anytime. We'll come on again and we'll have another chat. So, um, yeah, and we'll, we'll follow you along. With, are you running a program with the Changing Birth on Earth or...? Um, I am. I've got a birth warrior program. Um, it's online and I'm starting to um, run workshops. My first one's in Mount Isa on the 10th and 11th. Oh, right. Um, people yeah. say Mount Isa. Yeah. yeah. 10th and 11th of February. But I'm going out there to birth with a woman at home. Um, she did my online program a couple of years ago and it was really successful for her and she said now the ultimate please 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 is to be able to birth at home and uh, her story is just amazing of how she's got to where she is now too so I'm going out to Mount Isa and, and let's just see if the interest in natural birth is there yeah, testing the water that's brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> dipping my toe in the heat <laughs> It's a big toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, well, we'll let you go, Mary. And thanks again, okay. Mary, joining us. Mary Ziegler from Budrum in Queensland. And we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>